Hi, this is Sue from the Mountain Canary Company. Ed wants to visit with you about watering your mules or horses in camp and on the trail and in the backcountry. Go ahead, Ed. Thank you, folks. How are you this morning? <clears throat> Boy, it's hot here. I'm trying to get this thing done early. I got out and got some pictures from, for you for en entrances in this and the mules out eating grass, but boy, it's a scorcher here, so that's why we're not outside taking advantage of the pretty outside. Well, <clears throat> last video I did for you guys was on uh, feeding, <clears throat> and then it, there I mentioned that you need to feed water your animals before you feed them and try to offer water after they feed them so that uh, your dry feeds don't have a, has, has a chance to work well to the system. Well, let's, let's start talking about general watering. That's a tricky subject. You believe it or not, it sounds so simple, but it's not. <clears throat> well, let's start at the trailhead. At the trailhead, there's a lot of times there's water troughs, there's, there's facilities set up for all of that type of process of watering your animals. But you know, it's really kind of a little bit of risky. It'd be like, uh, like a kindergarten, all the kids with the germ, germ factory. So <clears throat> I tend to, to not water in water troughs. If there's a source there, I take and figure out how to get water to buckets. Or if I carry water in my trailer, I take water from the trailer rather than going to a, a water trough in, in the uh, actual facility. You have no idea if an animal's come through that has a disease. We just don't take any chances. We bring, normally bring stock in together in, in different areas. We end up quarantining and paying attention to it. Well, this is just the same kind of a situation. And hopefully there's a pump or a faucet where you can get the fresh water out. Now, <clears throat> going down the trail, <clears throat> I suggest in hot weather or heavy work, you offer water as often as you can. But the problem of offering, if you're running one animal, you can offer water very easily. If you're riding with a group of people, you have to be ready to once you've watered your animal or wherever you are in a group, you have to pull out, block the trail, and let the other animals behind you water. Because as soon as your animal starts to leave, they're herd animals, they're going to try to follow that animal and they're going to be pulled out of the water and not get a drink. <clears throat> Same thing happens when you have a pack stream. It's really difficult, especially this summer where I've been a lot. You've got very small streams. They're drinking out of a little trickle, trickle of a of a spring coming out of the hillside, and they only drink them maybe one at a time. <clears throat> so there you go. You pull in, try to give them a drink, try to give them a drink. One of my right hand will get a good slug. Next one will get a little more. Then they step up. Next one will get a little more. And I'll try and bl block the trail. Try to bunch them up. In other words, don't let pull them through only one at a time. Leave them through one at a time. Now, hopefully, the last animal, four, five, or six, is going to get a drink. Many, many times they don't. This is heartbreaking to watch them. Look at that water as they walk past it. <clears throat> There's nothing much you can do about it. If the weather's really, really, really hot and you're worried, you have to go up, pull a pack string up, tie them off, take those animals back to water, and give them water one, one at a time. <clears throat> so it's kind of tricky. And there's, there's other times that you think they should get a drink and they don't want anything to do with it. I've ridden them into a river before after a hot run. They just stand there and look at everything around. One will start to drink, maybe another one will drink. You never know. <clears throat> you pull them out of camp, <clears throat> you pull them out of camp on a high line in the back country or wherever you are, and you take them to a water source. My suggestion is, if possible, take two. Don't take one. You take one, they get so nervous and jerky, the other ones are back on the high line away from them. They're a herd animal. They're vulnerable now. They may not trust you to have the instincts they have. So you only get a few of them that'll get a drink. So, you know, it sounded like I'm giving you, there are problems. And there are problems. It's something you have to work at, be willing to work at. Feeding is, is a piece of cake if you got the feed. Watering is a bit of a chore at times. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> in camp, I've had situations where, like up on the Dosey Wallops one night, I went into Dose Meadows. It was a long day. We, it took us hours to find the cash box we had to get stuff in and out of. By the time I got up and back to the campground, which were on the mile or so below where Dose Meadows where I was going to stay, 
<clears throat> it was 11 o'clock at night. <clears throat> and obviously it was dark. And so I fired up a lantern, and the only water I had was past the camp a bit, coming out of a little trickle. It was in a gulch. You had to go down into this gulch and you kind of move some rocks around so they could have a little pool to drink out of. <clears throat> but as soon as I went down there with the light, all the light reflections and I kind of got a goobery. Light reflections for mules don't, doesn't work well with their eyes. And so it was a real wrestling match and I couldn't get two there. I could only get one there at a time. So it was a real wrestling match and the worst part of that was <clears throat> when I got him down in this place, this hole, um, and they wanted to come out, it was so hard to climb it out, I had to climb out first and they wanted to climb out over the top of me. Not to climb over me, but the fact was that their stride and everything is different than mine. So they're scrambling up and I'm scrambling up and I got two feet of boots and no feet like they do and they're catching rocks and up and coming out. So it's a little bit hazardous when you put yourself in some of these situations. <clears throat> After that, I got to some, got doing some serious thinking on it. There's got to be a better mousetrap. So one of the things I've come up with, and that also helps from a packer at the park. Uh, there, Claire Donato was the head packer, and I worked with her in a couple of jobs. And she popped up with a tool I'll show you in a minute that really kind of got my attention. <clears throat> but everything I always carry with me, I carry, I carry collapsible water buckets. These are really great in camp where you can hold, carry water in camp. <clears throat> and uh, I usually have two of these in camp. I'll go down to a water source and sometimes a lot of these areas we pretty much have to couple, cup it out of the water, out of, the, out of a stream, a little trickle or a, dig a spring out to get water. I fill these up and I take them into camp and I actually set them where I'm cooking so I got, now I got water. But this also works for bringing water to the animals. The animals do not, on a whole, do not like to put this on their nose. They don't like the idea of putting their hose, that nose down in this thing. Well, there's water down in it. They can't see everything. They can't see the depths and everything. But they're not too sure about it. So I can't water on this very well. <clears throat> so <clears throat> what I found was Claire brought this into camp when I was working with it. This is a collapsible water basin. Whoa, I said, that's interesting. We got, they got it, she got it from Outfitter Supply years ago. They got, they, the park had them, and I, and I went and bought myself one. So what I do there is I go down to the stream, and I put this up in an area where they're eating, where they can see it. And I take a bucket of water from a stream to this. If it's, if, it's, if it's a situation where you're going to worry about it, so I fill this up with water. This will take, I can't remember how many of this will take. But it'll take probably probably five five of these or four. <clears throat> so <clears throat> then I'll go to the high line at, at, when I'm when I'm ready at the high line, and I'll pull one of the animals off and let them drink in front of everybody. Now the whole gang is there now, so they're they'll come over there and tank up, and this thing will go down, down, down. You're running back to the river or whatever, getting some more water. <clears throat> and a lot of times there's water available, but access is terrible. It's either, it's either risky for them or risky for you and them combined. So this works out very, very well. It collapses up, little or nothing. Um, I usually carry it with me. It goes into my, my, uh, one of my boxes, and I carry that with me plus, plus these. This works out really good. Be careful, though. Uh, you've got to be very careful. They, when you're doing this, when you're, when you're feeding any animal individually, it, feed bags, water, whatever, um, if they get moving their head around, banging their head around, if you're not paying attention, you and their head can connect. It happened to me once. I loosened some front teeth. Uh, well, you know, they, uh, they, heart, they tightened up again, so I guess it wasn't all that bad. But it was kind of a little scary there for a while. I whistled well. But, uh, <clears throat> so these are really, really handy way to, to water in camp or at, say at the if you're at the trailhead and you're camping in a trailer or something. These are still a good way to do it. Uh, they're, uh, they're handy to have, um, and uh, um, these are really, I, I don't normally go camping, up, I don't want to set camp up without these. I'm going to give a little water bucket story. <clears throat> I was up in the, up in the Dosi, Dosi Wallops Trail um, camp, at camp, camp, uh, camp Hayden with trail crew, 
And uh, the night, one night, I, I had all my water set up for morning, so I went and hit my bedroll and crawled in. And I'm all set with, the, with the, when I get up in the dark of the night, start watering and feeding and everything. I had water for coffee, <clears throat> you know, priorities. So I went over there and I had a couple of these set up. They'll get them full and they'll set. And so I got over there and I got my coffee pot and I was all set to scoop some water out and went, what the heck is that? There's a mouse, a little kangaroo rat had got in there, and here he was dead. He drowned. He was sitting there floating around, four legs out, the front legs out, floating around. Well, you know, I, got, I had to sit there and think, how bad do I want a cup of coffee or do I want to go fill that darn thing up again? Well, I decided the option, the last option, I filled it up. But, so the so water in your animals is, is, is kind of really kind of tricky, critical. If you've got that deal on the trail where you're pulling animals out of, of the stream, um, you've got to make sure when you get to camp, that equipment gets off of there, or the first chance you get, or you work, you get them back, get that last, you get those guys to water first. The second thing is, if you're in the backcountry and you're having trouble watering, and it's one of those days where you really know that you need to get them water, you're suffering, then they're suffering. So that's the case to take the time. Take the time. Tie off your string. Go back and pull the ones that aren't getting water. Get everybody a good gut full of water. And then if you've got a couple little trickles ahead of you, you can pass through them. Keep moving. You'll make up that time you're wasting there. Or not wasting, you're using there. <clears throat> but water is real critical and you know, you know how to check for dehydration. You just grab a hunk of hide and pull it out hold on to it, let go. If it is, doesn't just pop back, if it holds its shape and then slowly goes back, you're going to animals start suffering from dehydration. It's really hard to get salts and uh, um, the type of materials into them in the backcountry. I tried for years to do it. I threw salt in, I threw, I threw um, apples in, I'd soak them in salt, rub them in salt, and they just ignore them. They didn't want to deal with that salt. Robert Riversol gave it, came, in, came in a solution for me, gave me an idea. He takes his, his coarse salt and he kind of runs it around a little oil. And he throws that in with the feed. So it all kind of sticks together a little bit. Now, I haven't had a chance to try that, but it, that might work. So it's the thing about it is remember, you want to get salts, electrolytes, whatever you can into them. Uh, but, you know, your, your, main, your main thing, we can live a long time without feed, so can they. But you can't live very long and very well without water. Okay, folks, that's that's it for today on this one. <clears throat> if you wouldn't mind, please subscribing. Get a, give other folks a chance if you like this and like what we're doing here for you. And by remember now, it's all for you, not for us. And um, but as always, if you please write as often as you can. Please, please, please write safe.